Please note that if you purchase something by clicking on a link within this story, we may receive a small commission of the sale. Nina is in Alex's office and is trying to log into the computer, but getting errors. Suddenly, Drew stops by, and she says she doesn't have time for him, as she's trying to get into this computer to upload her gossip column so it can run in the next edition. Drew points out Alexa's computer password is on a sticky on the desk. Nana uses it to hack into the computer and uploads her column. She tells Drew she'll be going, and he can wait here for Alexis. He explains he's here to see her, and wonders if she likes this new job. She says it's not what she wants to be doing, and Alexis hates all her ideas. Drew wonders if she misses Crimson. Of course, Nina misses Crimson, calling it her baby, and it did not prepare her for this job. He says selling lies about beauty and fashion is one thing, but you can't lie in a newspaper as you will get caught. Nina asks why he's asking her about Crimson, as she doubts Carly, and he pillow talk about giving it back to her. Drew explains he fired Carly, and Nina is stunned. She thinks that couldn't have gone over well, and then says, Oh my God, Carly dumped you. She thinks Carly dumped him 30 seconds after Jason came back. He only says it wasn't like that. She knows he is still angry at her, so is he really going to give Crimson back to her? He hasn't decided if he wants to let it die or not, but he doesn't like his name attached to failure. Nin is fine with Carly's name being attached to the magazine failing. He won't do that to Carly and tempts her with the idea that if she came back to Crimson, she'd get a little more of that respect from people she's lost. However, Carly's already started on the next issue, so they'll have to work together on it for that one issue. Nina refuses to have her name on a magazine filled with Carly's motorcycle fashion ideas. Drew says fine, he'll let the magazine die and begins to walk out, but Nina stops him. At a deception photo shoot, Sasha is modeling for Belpo, a fashion magazine, and the rep is prisoned. He's not happy, calling Sasha too accessible. Lucy stops the shoot to give Sasha some notes. She asks her to pretend she doesn't want to be here and act as if she is doing them a favor. The shoot still isn't going well, so Sasha stops the shoot and asks the magazine rep he wants from her. He feels it's not her, but it's just not going to work for what he needs. He excuses himself, and Sasha guesses they have the morning free. In the deception office, Cody finds Maxie, Tracy, and Brooklyn meeting with Spinelli about new safety protocols. Maxie thought he'd be with Sasha, but he says it's a solo shoot today and she has Lucy there. Tracy chuckles at the problems Lucy is likely causing. The meeting is interrupted when Maxie is called by the upset rep from the company behind the shoot and learns it's been canceled. After her call, Maxie claims everything is fine, but Brooke Lynn says it isn't as Cody texted Sasha and learned Belpo canceled the shoot. Lucy and Sasha arrive and Tracy asks what Lucy did to get the shoot canceled. Sasha says it wasn't Lucy, the creative director wasn't happy with the way it was going, and nothing she could do could solve the problems. Lucy explains the issue is that Sasha is just too wholesome. Lucy tells her not to take this the wrong way, but Sasha's photographs are too darn nice. Cody says this is insane, and Sasha is gorgeous. Lucy says she's not disputing that, but she doesn't have that mystery and edginess that magazines want. Suddenly, Tracy is called to the hospital for a board meeting and takes off. Maxie reminds Lucy that she picked Sasha as the face of deception, so she can't ask her to change her look. Lucy suggests maybe they need a second face. Spinelli gets a call from Michael and excuses himself from the meeting. Cody stands up for Sasha and says if they are replacing Sasha, then he won't be a part of this company either. Lucy isn't going to put up with a stable boy who only posed for a few photos back talking. She also says to be honest Sasha isn't that good of a model and they only let her stay so she'd be happy. Maxie insists that is not true. Cody tells Lucy he's never hated a job more than he hates this one. Put him on fake smiles and petting alpacas. Cody says Lucy doesn't have to fire him, she quits. Lucy tells him that he can't, as he has a contract. Cody tells her to sue him and storms out. Maxie thinks they can give Cody time to cool off 
and then smooth things over. Sasha says she knows Cody, and he's not coming back, his mind is made up. Lucy says the beauty business is tough, and she hopes Sasha isn't offended by what she said and that her beauty was never in question. Sasha was not offended, but hearing Cody's words about finding modeling tiring and tedious made her realize she feels the same way. She thinks maybe she should quit too. In her room at the hospital, TJ questions Heather about some gaps in her medical records before her surgery. TJ is paged and steps out. Heather is left with Laura, and she thinks about how different her life was years ago. Heather says it was nice for Laura to come, but she doesn't have to stay. Laura feels that nobody should be alone before surgery, and there aren't many Webbers left, so they need to stick together. Heather is glad she can remember how she was. Heather brings up Esme and how much she misses her. Heather assumes Laura hates Esme. Laura didn't hate Esme. She hated some of the things she did, especially the last thing she did. Heather can't help but wonder if she herself had made better choices if she could have had a better life. Heather asks if she was always this wild. Laura says she always took risks and went after whatever she wanted, but she wasn't crazy. Laura says this is a more recent development. TJ interrupts and says they are ready for Heather in the oar. Heather asks if the surgery is successful. What happens next? Will her life get better finally just for the DA to send her to prison across the country? Laura doesn't know if she has any options. Heather says she hears everyone in California prisons has cable TV so she can at least watch her shows. Heather is taken to surgery and Kevin shows up to check on Laura. Laura says she's been so focused on hating Heather or being afraid of her for so long. But what if she wakes up a different person? Kevin says mental illness is a difficult subject and the cobalt has been poisoning her for so long that her bad ways of thinking have been imprinted on her brain. But he's not a neurologist, so anything is possible. Laura waxes about her own issues with mental health in the past, but she had people who helped her get better. Laura wonders what if Heather had someone to help her. Would she have had a different life? She questions if Heather is even responsible for the crimes she committed due to the poisoning. Kevin can't see all of her crimes being overlooked, but Laura knows Heather was never this crazy. Kevin says she has a heart of gold for caring about Heather in spite of everything she's done. Kevin offers to search for any cases being overturned on psych evaluations. Dion finds Liz at the nurse's station and tells her there is a discrepancy in the med storage area. They are short on drugs the system says they should have. Willow listens in and texts Michael they need to meet. Liz checks the inventory and thinks it might have been a simple mistake in reporting. And the drugs missing aren't anything anyone could sell on the street, just some antibiotics. Liz looks into what's going on, talks to Terry over the phone, and is certain this is just a reporting error. Dion asks Liz what if this isn't a reporting error and the meds are gone. Liz says that would mean their system isn't secure, and she could lose her job over this. Willow goes on her break and meets Michael in the Quartermain stables. She says the meds she took to treat Jason have been flagged as missing, and Liz is going to have to answer for the discrepancies. Michael says they'll figure this out. Willow doesn't see a way out of this for them or for Jason. Willow continues to spiral in fears that Agent Cates could start questioning them. Michael tells her how Jason protected him when he was a teen in prison so he has to stand with him now and needs Willow to do so as well. Michael calls Spinelli and asks if he can hack into the GH pharmacy system. Back at the hospital, Liz finds the system reporting is now up to date. Willow is back at work and listening in that everything has been fixed. Tracy appears having heard there was an issue with the pharmacy. Liz explains everything has been accounted for and it appears the system hasn't been keeping up to date which is a problem. She's sorry Tracy came down here for nothing. Tracy says it's okay as she saved her from another pointless meeting. On the next general hospital, Diane receives a call she's been expecting. Chase wonders if Brooklyn regrets going back to deception. Lucy screams at Maxie and Sasha that she's not going to let this tank her company. Olivia visits Cody in the stables and says, I could use a little bit of that right about now. 
Michael tells Jason he's found a way to help him to disappear.